Hello again. So now we're going to study a different type of limits, namely limits at infinity. These are different from the infinite limits that we studied in the previous video. So what we're now interested in is the behavior of the function f of x as x becomes very, very large, or either on the positive side or on the negative side. Okay, so let's define what I'm talking about. So let f be a function, which is defined at some interval here between any number a and uh, infinity. Then we say that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x is equal to l if the values of the function f of x can be made arbitrarily close to the number l by taking x to be super, super large. So basically you're looking at whether the function, the value of the function here, converges to a finite value l when x becomes very large. Now you can do the exact same thing on the negative side, so you say that the limit as x goes to minus infinity of f of x is equal to l if the values of f of x becomes, become close to l when x is, is very, very large, but negative. Okay, so let's let, look at some examples of this. So uh, I'm first going to consider a very simple function. We've studied it already, the function 1 over x. So if I graph this function, well, what does it look like? It's going to look like something like that on the positive side and something like that on the negative side. Now, if I ask you what is the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x, so what you want to look at is what is the behavior as of the function here as x becomes very, very large on the positive side. Well, if x is a very large positive number, 1 over x just go to 0. So we see that the limit here should be equal to 0. Now I can also look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity of 1 over x. This would amount to uh, looking at the behavior of the function as x becomes very large but negative. And here, well, 1 over a very large negative number is still 0. So I still get that the limit here is zero. Right, so when we have such a thing, to remember in the previous video we introduced something called vertical asymptotes, which basically were vertical lines such that the function blows up on either side of the line. Well, here we can define something which is called horizontal asymptote of the curve. So these are horizontal lines such that uh, the, the function, the limit of the function as x goes to plus or minus infinity, uh, the value of the function uh, goes towards this uh, point L. So in this case, the line y equals to 0 is a horizontal asymptote. Because on both the positive and the negative side, the function, the limit of the function goes to 0. Okay, so let's do a more complicated example. So let's look at the function x squared minus 1 over, that should be a square, so over x squared plus 1. What does that look like? Well, this is harder to study, but uh, you could actually try to figure it out yourself, or you can just trust me. So at x equals to 0, well, the value is minus 1, so I'll get something like that. It will cross the y-axis at x equals to 1. So well, let me draw it and then change, fortunately, my... So let's assume, let's forget about these numbers here. And let's take this to be 1, this to be minus 1, right? And that's basically what the function looks like here. Now, if I ask you what is the limit of the function as x goes to infinity, well, here, if x becomes very, very large from the graph, you can see that y, the value of the function, will, be, uh, will, will, go towards, uh, will converge towards 1. So the limit here of the function as x goes to infinity should be equal to 1. And similarly, the limit of the function as x goes to minus infinity should also be equal to 1. But let me try to uh, calculate these things without first drawing the graph. So we're going to start from the function and then try to see why this is true. So I'm just going to do the plus infinity case, but the minus infinity case is the same. So I want to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Now, if I just stare at this, it looks like what I'm trying to evaluate, if I set x to be very large, I'll get something very large over something very large, which doesn't tell me much, because something very large over something very large could be anything. Could be small, could be large, could be infinite, I don't know. So I need to manipulate this expression to uh, be able to evaluate the limit. But one thing I can do is divide both the numerator and the denominators by uh, x squared, and then we'll get a different expression. So what we'll get, so if I divide by x squared upstairs, I get 1 minus 1 over x squared. If I do the same thing downstairs, I'll get 1 
plus 1 over x squared. And now the beauty is that you see that once I've done that, if I send x to be very, very large, 1 over x squared just go towards 0. And this also goes to 0. So I end up with 1 minus something very small over 1 plus something very small. What is this? Well, this is just 1 over 1 or basically 1. So now I've calculated the limit here, which is exactly what I got by looking at the graph. And the tip here that I can give you whenever you have a limit at, at plus or minus infinity of some sort of ratio of polynomials here, the tip is to divide both the numerators and the denominators by the largest power of x that occurs in the denominator. So here the largest power was x squared. So I divided by x squared both upstairs and downstairs, and that gave me a way to evaluate this limit. So let's do a few more examples of this type. Okay, so here's the first one. So I have to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of this ratio of polynomials. I'll just apply the tip right away. So I want to divide both upstairs and downstairs by the highest power of x in the denominator. So that's x cubed. So what do I get? I get the limit as x goes to infinity. I divide by x cubed upstairs and downstairs. 1 minus x cubed minus x squared over x cubed. That's just 1 over x. Divide by x cubed downstairs. I get 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 1 over x cubed. And now if I send x to be very, very large, this becomes very small, goes to 0, this goes to 0, goes to 0, goes to 0. What I end up with is just 0 over 1, which is just 0. So in this case, the limit is just 0. All right, let's do this example here. So I want to apply the same tip again. So now I want to divide by the highest power in the denominator, so that's x cubed. So if I divide the numerator by x cubed, what do I get? I'll get 1, no, sorry, not 1, but x minus 3 over x plus x over x cubed, that's 1 over x squared, divided by, now I divide by x cubed, so I get 1 minus 1 over x squared plus 2 over x cubed. Now again, when I send x to be very, very large, what do I get? Well, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0, this goes to 0. So this is really now the same as the limit as x goes to infinity of x over 1. What is this? Well, if I take x and made it, make it very, very large, I just get something very, very large. So in other words, the limit here is just infinite. So I get infinity. So it may happen that limits at infinity are actually also infinite limits, meaning that they are, do not exist. They don't give a finite number, but rather they go to plus or minus infinity. That's perfectly uh, allowed. Okay, now let's look at one last example. So the limit as x goes to infinity of the sine function. Now here's the question. What is this? So we know that a sine function oscillates between minus 1 and 1. What is its limit as x becomes very, very large? Is it 1, minus 1? That's not so obvious, right? If you draw the function sine of x, we'll get something like that. Now, if I take x to be very, very large, then what we're trying to ask is whether the function f of x, the values of the function, converge toward a finite number as I take x to be very, very large. Well, the answer is that no, this does not exist. Because if I take x to be very large, the function keeps oscillating, so it does not converge to a number. It's not neither 1 or minus 1 or 0. It just does not exist. So this limit here does not exist.